Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today we're going to be talking about starching your fabric. So starching your fabric is a completely personal preference and I've met people who always pre-starch all of their fabric and then I've met people who just don't starch at all. I think I fall somewhere in between. I don't starch all of my fabric ever, um, but if I'm working with a block that has really small pieces or a tiny block in general, then I will starch my fabric before I cut it out just so that I can kind of help myself uh, keep that block all together. I think sometimes people think smaller blocks are easier, but smaller blocks are actually a little bit harder because you have less kind of wiggle room and so pre-starching your fabric for those can be really, really helpful. Now, I personally don't use the super heavy spray can starches. Um, I just feel like aerosols, A, are bad for the environment. I kind of don't want to breathe all that in. And also, um, it's just kind of an added step that, like I said, unless I'm doing a small block, I don't really feel like I need to do that. Uh, but you could, of course, do whatever you want. Today, I'm going to show you how I starch fabric and what I use. Now, please use whatever you prefer. Uh, some people really prefer that kind of heavier starch. In that case, you would want to just really soak your, like say you're working with a fat quarter or even yardage, really soak that front and back and then find somewhere like your shower curtain rod or you can even, even buy like little drying racks from like Target um, and you wanna put that somewhere safe for it to dry. You also want to um, work in a well-ventilated area and possibly even wear a mask because you don't wanna breathe all of that in. Once your fabric is completely dry, then you can take it out and just give it a press and then you're ready to go. Now that heavy starch and that method will shrink your fabric. So you always wanna do that before you cut your pieces. It shrinks it one way about a half an inch or so. So if you had cut out all of your pieces and then really you know, soaked them and pressed them, all of your pieces would be just a little bit too small and that would be really sad. So make sure if you're using that method to do it first. So now the way I like to do it is kind of per block, like I said, if I'm using something that has a, like really small pieces. But what I've been using recently is Mary Ellen's Best Press. And I love this one. This is the lavender scent. This is probably my favorite scent. I've also tried this one. This is called Fresh Linen. And for some reason, I don't love this scent. As you can see, it's like a full bottle and my <laughs> lavender is almost all out. Um, it's okay, but it's not my favorite. I've also used this one. This one is... Caribbean Beach, and this one actually smells really, really nice and fresh. So these are probably my two favorites. Now, like I said before, if you're doing the super heavy starching method, it will shrink your fabric. I haven't actually had that issue with the Mary Ellen's Best Press at all. I think it's kind of a more medium to light kind of starching versus like that really heavy one. And so how I do it is I'll just kind of do a light spritz all on the top of say a fat quarter or a fat eighth or whatever I'm cutting out of, press it until it's dry, and then I'll cut my pieces out. But I've also sprayed this on a completed block that I've done before just to kind of give it a really nice finish, um, you know, when I press it. And I haven't noticed it shrinking the block at all. All. So that's kind of why I prefer this because it doesn't matter where in the process I'm spraying my fabric. It doesn't seem to affect it, but it does do a great job at getting out those really nasty creases, like from where your fabric's folded when it comes off the bolt, or if you just have kind of a piece that's been in your stash for a long time and it's got a bunch of creases in it. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a demo here that I did using a best press and you can kind of see how I use it. And hopefully you can kind of see on the camera, the volume that it gives the fabric and that it doesn't resize it. Unfortunately, I don't have smell of vision but this smells like a lovely lavender field, so hopefully you can just imagine it. Let's go ahead and start the demo. So here's a sample I have. This has not been starched or anything. It's just nice and floppy, and a lot of times when you're starching, it's going to be to keep your pieces, give your fabric a little bit more body. It'll help keep it from distorting while you're sewing, so that's kind of why you would do it, but the main reason I will starch a piece of fabric is because I um, I'm going to be working on a bias and I don't want it to stretch too much. So if you're unfamiliar with what bias means, um, if you take your piece of fabric and you pull on it along the grain, so like my grains are running this way. So if I pull on it, you can see that I hardly have any pull there. There's a little bit more on this pull. But if you pull it diagonally, you can see that there's a lot of pull there. And that's gonna be your bias edge. And so if you're ever sewing where you have to cut a piece along the diagonal like that, um, and you haven't starched your fabric, it can really distort as it's running through your presser foot. So a lot of times that's why you'll want to starch a piece of fabric. 
Now, like I said, if you're going to use a heavy duty starch, I would go ahead and um, do that before you cut out your pieces. Um, but for Mary Ellen's Best Press, a lot of times I'll forget and I'll just go ahead and just do a light spray on it before I use it and that it's already been cut out and it works just fine. So in order to do that, um, and we'll do these larger pieces too, but you just kind of spray it, just get it wet. You can see it's nice and wet there. And then you're just going to take your iron and you're just going to press it until it dries. And you can tell that it's dry because it's no longer dark. Now here's what how floppy it is after one row of pressing. And then if we flip it over and we do the other side. And again, you're just going to press it till it's dry. And a lot of times when I do that, I'll just let it sit there until it cools as well. But you can see there's no wet marks anymore. So now we can see that this fabric really has some nice body to it. It's a lot stiffer. So now when we try and pull it sideways or along the bias, you can see that it's hardly stretching at all. So that really just helped give this fabric some stability. So now you can work with it. Um, I love doing this when I'm using smaller pieces or um, if I've got, like I said, if I'm going on the bias. So we'll just do this larger piece and I just do it the same way. And you're, you're supposed to be pretty thorough with how much you put on there. I'm usually in kind of a hurry and so I just kind of spray it and give it a press and I find that it does what I need it to do. So kind of depends on what you're doing, but if you're working on a quilt where there's like a lot of Y seams or you know diagonal bias cuts, this can really be a lifesaver and just keep all your pieces nice and accurate. So we've got that pressed. And it's that fast. And now this piece has a little bit more body to it than what it had before. Since we've now starched it, we won't have quite as much stretching. See, you can hopefully tell from beginning how um, it's not quite as stretchy anymore. And then just one last thing, um, this does say it's earth and people friendly, which I also like about this product. Um, and so I don't feel like I'm gonna be breathing in a bunch of harmful chemicals. If you're using a more um, stringent starch, then you are gonna wanna be careful, maybe wear a mask, have a well-ventilated room, that kind of thing. And then you're probably also not gonna wanna do it right here on your ironing board. You may want to um, do it over like a bathtub or something like that, where you can kind of just saturate your fabric, hang it um, in your bathtub until it dries and then press it, um, just so you aren't getting all of that over your pressing surface. But I will say that I've never had an issue. I always do that on my pressing surface. This doesn't seem to um, really cause any damage to my surface um, or the environment around me. And so um, this is probably one of my favorite products if I'm needing to do a little bit of starching on my fabric. All right guys, that is gonna be it for my review of Mary Ellen's Best Press and how I starch my fabric or how often I starch my fabric. Um, I prefer this method, it works really well for me, but of course you can experiment and do whatever works best for you. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them below and I will get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe and you can even hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.